This beast here is a Brabus G800 and it's a little bit like a rainbow Rolex Daytona. So that's a gold Rolex that has then been encrusted with gemstones and diamonds. Mark Wahlberg, John Mayer, and the actual owner of this car has one. In fact, here's a look at the owner's watch now. It's pretty special. Now this is the same kind of thing. So basically Brabus has taken a G65, which is already expensive and exclusive enough already. And then they just made it more expensive and more exclusive. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it and why it costs so much. And yeah, I'm gonna point out it's cool features. It's not so cool features. I'm gonna take it for a drive. And of course I'm gonna launch it and hopefully I won't crash it because it's rather expensive. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the price. So when this car was on sale in 2014, it cost around 600,000 pounds, give or take a few thousand here or there. Yeah, pretty expensive. In terms of depreciation, well, it suffered some. It's probably worth around 350,000 pounds now, but it might go up again in future as we all switch to electric cars and these kind of beasts become dinosaurs, super rare, even more rare than it is already. So if you're thinking about buying a new car, you can get one of these through, no, you can't, you can't get one of these through CarWow. But if you're thinking about selling your car, we can help you out. So if you click on the pop out banner up there, you can go to CarWow, you can input the details of your car, upload a few photos and you'll get offers back on your car from our trusted dealers and you can just pick one and they'll come and take your car away and give you the money also if you like german cars and you're a german person and you'd rather watch a german presenter talk about german cars in the german language follow us on our german channel i'll put a link in the description below oh bugger it i'll put a link up there as well click away go subscribe there now let's talk about the design upgrades you get on the Brabus G800 over the normal G65. So I'm sure you're all very familiar with the normal G65. Obviously, it's the previous generation of the G-Wagon, so it's very boxy in shape, but Brabus have added some high-tech LED reversing and fog lights on each side. You've got this extra bit here with the reflector and there is a roof spoiler with a high level brake light and obviously the Brabus and 800 badging there. But that's about it from the rear. It's from the side where this G800 looks noticeably different than the standard G65, if ever a G65 was standard. Now, it all stems from these wheels. They are 23-inch Y monoblock forged alloys, platinum edition. Now, how I know that? A little plaque on them there like that. They are immense, these wheels. As a result, they've had to widen the bodywork. So you've got wider wheel arches. You've actually got wider body panels as well. Look, can you see this sticking out here? It's 12 centimetres wider than the standard G65. It's nuts. There's also these little LED lights there and there, which illuminate the running board so you can see your expensive shoes as you climb in and out. I don't have expensive shoes. There's this vent here, which is bespoke to Brabus, normally be an AMG one. Actually, it's not a vent at all. Look, it's fake. It's a fake vent. Mm. Yeah, anyway, let's ignore them and talk about these huge exhaust pipes. There's another two on the other side as well. What an absolute beast. It's huge. And don't forget, look, you've got brake calipers that match the platinum, bronzy, browny, coppery colour on the wheels. There's some huge brakes, but they're going to need to be because this is a heavy car. It's a very heavy car. Sounds like we're being dive bombed. What well, is this World War II? Is this the Battle of Britain? The most obvious one is this big carbon fibre bonnet scoop to feed air into that engine. It doesn't actually feed any air in at all. It's, it's fake, look, that's all blanked out. Oh well, it's just there for show. It looks mean, as do the LED lights on the top there. Another upgrade this car has over the standard G800 is the Designo paint. It may look black, not black. It's actually gray, and therefore it's more expensive. Now, what the Brabus G800 does have as standard over the normal G65 is, of course, the Brabus grille. You've got your G800 badging, your Brabus badging, a redesigned front bumper. This bit here, look, that's metal, that is. It's like hardcore. You've got carbon fiber here and here, LED little spots there and there, plus the light covers. They're smoked. And instead of the usual indicators that sit on top of the wings that you get on the standard G-Wagon, you now have these carbon fibre ridges, kind of like carbon fibre Toblerone. This is one aggressive looking car. You don't want this in your rear view mirror because you think it's going to just drive straight over you. Here on the inside, there is one major change and you've probably spotted it already, haven't you? Yes, you're right. It is this little B here on the lock thingy. What do we call those things? Uh, not thingy. Lock stud? Lock nipple? Obviously, it's this insane brown interior which is alcantara 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 soft leather soft leather soft leather even soft leather look the floor mats oh these seats are actually lovely look and they've got brabus fine leather back on them there and brabus 800 stitched into the headrests so nice and these seats 
of course they're ventilated and heated but they also have air bladders so you can get them to squeeze you tightly on your love handles and you can extend the actual seat base for some more under thigh support that's not all. You've got carbon fiber here, carbon fiber here, carbon fiber here. It's nuts. Then you've got these lovely big gear shifter paddles made out of aluminium. There's Brabus here on the gear selector. You've got Brabus on the sills and they're illuminated. Brabus on the pedals look lovely. But for some reason, there's no Brabus on the dolls. Still says AMG. Hmm. I haven't changed the infotainment system either. It's this old fashioned one that you got in this car back in the day. But look at this, love this sunroof. Big, big sunroof, let the light in. Speaking of letting the light in, or not letting the light in, this car actually has a very tinted windscreen. So it's very hard for people to see in at the driver, which is probably handy if you've got those forward facing speed cameras and you go past one. No, no don't, don't listen to me, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, don't speed. This J800 is designed to be like a limousine, though a whole lot more badass. So let's say I'm a mafia boss and I'm off to the arms deal. And I need to stretch out. Look, I can move the front passenger seat forward. Give myself more knee room. Yeah, that's better. Don't care who's sat there, they can't complain because I'll just shoot them in the back of the head. I can also then take control of my seat and then recline, make it more comfortable. I've got heating and ventilation here on my seat as well. And let's say I need to do some work. I can fold out my table here, maybe chop up some class A's, whatever that means, I don't know what that means. Or I could get out my iPad and play Mafia City, see how much of a boss I truly am. And then when I'm done with that, if I need to make a phone call, I can just press this and here is my iPhone. Oh yeah, hello, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, kill him, kill him. Yeah, kill him as well. Now keep him, actually kill him. When I'm done with that and I want to play PlayStation, press this button, fold down this huge screen, plug in my console into the HDMI input in the back and play. Again, a first person shoot him up, blast away to my heart's content without ever alerting the police. Oh, and the sound system as well, so you can really get into the game. It is amazing. Look at these tweeters up there. It's utterly nuts. And then if I need a cool drink, I don't really look. I've got cup holders, which are cooled. And, of course, there's a fridge for my champagne. There it is. Lovely. Oh, yes. This is very, very opulent. Finally, there's the boot, which is just as luxurious as the rest of the car, with loads of quilted leather about the place. So, if you're a rival boss that's been bundled back here and being transported to your shallow grave, there are worse ways to travel. Uh, apart from this, though, this kind of fridge bit gets in your way. You might bang your head off that. It's a bit uncomfortable. And that brings you on to five annoying things about this car. Whenever you open the door, the car makes this buzzing noise. It might be the fuel pump priming, Sometimes it switches off quite quickly, other times it just stays on until you lock the car and go away. Can you hear that? What's that all about? Sometimes this screen just lowers of its own accord, almost like the vehicle is possessed by a poltergeist. Yeah, it's odd. These big gear selector paddles are so close to the switch for the lights that if you flash them in anger, you end up accidentally changing down at the same time. Look. <laughs> And like the latest G63, you don't have electrically operated child locks. You have to do it manually here in the doors. Look, there's a little switch there. So you have it on for your children, you forget about it, then your mates get in the back and they can't get out. And it's, it's all very, very embarrassing. This car is averaging 11.9 miles per gallon. Now, if you can afford one of these, you don't really care so much about the cost. It's more the constant stopping, because even though this thing has a fuel tank the size of a swimming pool, it still gets through it rather, rather quickly. So always having to stop and refuel. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. This car was built before the days of petrol particulate filters, so it sounds fruity. <laughs> oh yeah! This car gets specially tuned adaptive dampers from Bilstein, set up specifically for Brabus, and you have two modes. Quite hard and very hard. Don't know which is which, they're all pretty hard and jiggly. SUVs don't come much more exclusive than this. Only 13 G800s were ever made. This car here is one of only 13 in the world. Madness. Yeah, it's still making the noise, but never mind that because behold, this thing. Six litre twin turbo V12 puts out 800 horsepower, hence the name, and 1100 newton meters of torque, though it's actually been reined in. The engine could produce 1400 newton meters, but then it would destroy the gearbox, which is a seven speed auto with a torque converter. It drives all four wheels, permanent four wheel drive system, and you've got a diff on the front and the rear axle, and one in the middle as well. I'm liking the carbon fiber, and this 
reflective material that I think they use on NASA spacecraft as well. It stops the bonnet melting. Anyway, shall we launch it? Let's launch it. Okay, let's see how utterly insane this thing is when it comes to accelerating. I've got my specialist timing gear here. I'm gonna brake boost it and launch it. Yeah, oh wow. Once that power comes in, oh, just totally mashed a poor insect there. Once the power comes in, it absolutely flies. So I've got five second to 60, which isn't dead quick, really. My old G63, when I say, oh, my new old G63 is quicker than this. Anyway, let's have another go. Brake boost, let's just reset that. Here we go. Once it's flying though, I mean, I'm wrestling the wheel. Uh, 4.91, <laughs> we lift off the accelerator. It's like, <laughs> as it just releases all that boost pressure through the wastegate. Oh my God. 4.91, I'm glad I came in sub five. It doesn't take off hard, but once it's going, it is going. And the wheel lights are tracking all over the place. Where are we going? Whoa, I mean, that's where it's at. Just there, right there. That mid-range, once you're moving, is insane. What a thing. Right, I'm gonna try and do you turn having a little blast. In fact, I might just do it in the garage. Well, I'm stopping at the garage, I should probably fill it with fuel because I've probably used about half a tank just doing that twice. I wonder if they sell new pants in there as well, because I could do with some. Just whack it into manual. Oh, that engine. <laughs> There's so much noise, so much like sucking and blowing. Sounds a bit rude, but you know what I mean. Like this big bi-turbo V12, just like. <laughs> My God. Okay, so it's quite interesting. Having had the new G63 for a long time, I don't for a year, I remember what these were like, these previous generation models. When I say previous, there was one generation, it's this, it's like from the 1970s. And they just tweaked it here and there. But an absolute pig to drive, let's be honest. It, it really is. I mean, I'm doing so many steering inputs. I'm gonna take it on a twisty road now, which should be quite funny because it might just topple over. And when you combine it with that power that gets you into trouble very, very quickly, and then you've got steering and brakes that aren't great for getting you out of trouble, this could be disastrous. I mean, oh gosh, yes. Those rigid axles front and back aren't great for on-road driving. Brilliant for off-road, but they send all the bumps and shakes through the cabin. The steering, which is, I think it's recirculating ball. I don't even know what that means, what it is. I just know that it's not rack and peanut like most cars have. So anyway, here we go. Let's have a little drive up here. It is an event though. I'll give it that much. Right, here comes a tight corner. Oh, yeah, slow. I'm gonna do exactly what it says on the road. I'm gonna slow down. Corners are not this car's friend. Here we go. The road's a bit wider here. <laughs> I just love the noises. <laughs> the noises are so good and there's so much torque. Uh, oh. <laughs> it just feels so old fashioned. If you want to see the difference between the old G-Wagon and the new G-Wagon in terms of acceleration, there's not much difference. In terms of braking and handling, there is a load of difference. I've actually done them head to head in a drag racing through various challenges. And if you click on the pop out banner just up there, you can actually watch that video. And the comparison will blow you away because the new car may look like this original G-Wagon, but boy, it's in a different league dynamically. And look at something like shaking about all over the place. It's almost like being on a bouncy castle when you were a kid and then a real fat kid came along and no matter what you did, they would just bounce you about all over the place. It's like this thing is possessed. It just wants to drive wherever it wants to drive. I've got very little say in it. It's like having an unruly bull mastiff on the lead. You know, it takes you where it wants to go and you're basically just stopping it running away and maiming other dogs. <laughs> Bloody hell, the steering. You know, I think I want to get out of this. It's just too expensive and too difficult to drive and too quick for its chassis. It's just gonna be safer for everyone if this driving segment ends now. So then what's my final verdict on the Brabus G800? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you blah, 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 blah. Forget all that nonsense. 
I'm gonna summarize this car like this. It is the most amazing car I've ever driven. I'll probably get shot for saying that. Oh, by the way, can you, can you hear it still buzzing? Still buzzing. Probably something to do with all the Class A's that have been left in it. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Let me know what you think of this car in the comments below. Click on those windows to watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can go to Car Wow to sell your car. Can you hear that? Oh yes, it is still buzzing. <laughs>